who in here has gone through a winter season um, checking furnaces and heat pumps when they were in a van, in their own van? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a lot of new vans that came in this year um, that this is gonna be the first winter experience. So we've got heat pumps and um, cool heaters that are going to start filling up the calendar. So I just want to talk about um, some basics with that. And what I'll do right now is just stick with the practical stuff, but we'll go through the, the um, presentation um, another morning. But some very practical things on all of our maintenances. This time of year, we have to be checking the heat. I know we already mentioned this, but this has to be done, especially on ones that we've installed. If we've installed that system, making sure that the customer is able to turn on heat and run it, um, their first experience with what we did is going to be good. It's going to work out fine. Where, where slash how should you be um, turning on the heat when you're going to test the heat? So, yeah, as techs, we're used to like jumpering stuff out. Part of me, okay, we got to melt the sides. Let's just open O and get this done, or I gotta bring on the heat strips, so let me just put white to red. But your customer's experience is going to be at the thermostat. That's how they turn on it. So you guys need to make sure the equipment works that way as well. It turns on, we do have thermostats with safety that don't allow a bag of heat to come on if it's hot enough outside. That's the situation where you can jump from white to red and get an amp draw on the heat strip, make sure it's coming on. Also, you're burning off the dust that is collected on the heat strip so it's not so stinky. And, um, especially property manager homes, if the um, heat strips get a big, thick layer of dust on there, and then they have a cold enough day that they come on as a backup, where the guests come in and drop it five degrees, raise it five degrees, it'll bring on the heat strips automatically. All of a sudden that can go off and be uh, blowing smoke alarms and quite a frustrating nuisance call for everyone involved. So you walk in the home, somebody's in there. I'm gonna be testing the heat. You're probably gonna smell it. It's not a problem, just turning it on and um, start out your conversations that way. Uh, practically, just good housekeeping stuff, um, being courteous of your customer. I like to check heat first when I show up on the job. Let the customer know I'm also gonna be testing heat and then turning it on. This time of year, it can be 70 degrees inside the house and 70 degrees outside and you got to try to check refrigerant well it helps a little bit to have that heat run first and checking your system in heat mode um, burning off any smell and also if you're going to be cleaning it and you, and you need to use cleaners on either the coil or the air handler not cooking that into the home later on hmm. is pretty important that nasty chemical cook smell so uh, it'll help you not forget, it'll help your process, check heat first. Um, uh, you're talking about using the thermostats, you say different thermostats have different thresholds for keeping on the emergency heat and some won't even, like your Nest thermostats, won't even do it unless you tell it specifically to run the emergency heat. Yeah. Like they have, it's part of their ego thing. You have to go and say, hey, kick on the heat strips. So just be aware of different thermostats and different styles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I said earlier, some of the heat thermostats won't let you bring on auxiliary heat, so you could jump for white to red if you need to turn off the nice. Right. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that specifically. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ecobee also does it if it's too hot outside. Nest is a different way, but Ecobee is just locked to the outdoor temperature. Um, Final thing, actually checking refrigerant and heat mode. Um, what is the best way to know if your refrigerant charge is accurate when you're checking in heat mode on a cold day? So it's a cold day. Well, we're like talking about next week coming up. Let's say next week we get a bunch of no heat calls. And we need to, we show up, it's not keeping up. We need to hook up our gauges and find out if the refrigerant levels are okay. What's the best way to know what refrigerant levels should be? Uh, the, uh, the, charging the, the electrical chart, the, the, the charging. Which one? 
Charging chart. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> Manufactured charging chart. We split. Crazy. They actually have the right numbers for what it should be. Split's a little bit harder to predict. First, um, your your uh, blower comes on at, at four when the heat kit is running, and then down at two when the heat kit's not running. Um, and I just don't have exact numbers for it. the heat pump split. So that's a little bit harder. Um, sounds like Luis knows some numbers. Sure. I mean, I've been told it's kind of the same thing with cool mode plan and split. And with the um, electric heat, we'll add like 10 more degrees or something like that. It's it's more than the same. It's 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 a higher, much higher split than it's hot. Yeah, much higher split than yeah, hot. Hot. I will let I don't test the split. Okay. But um, what I want you guys to all know and take away, and I'll again I'll do the presentation, dive in a little bit more later, is the manufacturer <coughs> heating testing heat mode chart is your best way. It gives you outdoor temperature, indoor temperature, and then you need to know whether your system is a TXV in the condenser, and you can actually hook up to the liquid line, or if it's a piston right there at the liquid line fork, and you're not even using the liquid line. You're hooking up to the discharge, which was uh, previously the suction, and the common suction port. Um, and again, that's all laid out in the manufacturer charging heat mode instruction. So pay attention to that. Finally, when you're adding refrigerant this time of year, things getting cold, let's weigh in the charge whenever possible, where we can Way in the charge if you're there for a big project and you're already going to be there a few hours um, and it's you know 65 degrees outside one of those days your best bet is to weigh in that charge because when you finish it's going to be hard to accurately set the charge on that project uh, you can use the charging um, blanket um, or you can wrap the condenser in your drop cloth where a little air gets through, but you bring up the pressures in heat mode, and it gives you um, pretty close an idea of what you're looking at, but um, whenever possible, way in the charge. When do you test heat mode? Hmm. When well, it starts? It's, it's funny. How do you how do you do it? Um, how do you do it? I Was walk it into the customer's house. Uh -huh. um, we have our conversations. I've asked questions. Right before I walk outside, I let them know. I'm going to be checking heat mode today just to make sure everything's working fine. Uh, there's a good chance you're going to smell it. Um, and then I walk over to the thermostat and I bump it up at least five degrees. Heat mode, at least five degrees, trying to bring on the heat strips with it. And uh, that's before I've done anything else on the system. Just it's a it's a, a different step in your process. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and like yeah, we're just process like we're in that flow state. <clears throat> um, and writing along with her uh, that just unlocked it. So just right off the bat is super super helpful. Rather than like just doing your normal process and you get started and you do this thing first and then oh shoot and it gets all complicated and then all of a sudden you're doing two hour maintenances. Um, that's because you're true. out of your process. Yeah, because you're out of your process. But just to uh, smush it in right there at the beginning and communicating that clearly with the customer um, is super, super helpful. That's like a, a pro, uh, pro tip for sure. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications, available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.